Well, what's up guys? I uh, happen to have a Delta Universal shower body here that we're gonna put in this condominium bathroom. This is a remodel, so it's a little bit different than what you normally see, and it's gonna be, gonna be a few things we gotta work around. This place is plumbed with copper, as you can tell, even though I'm going up to the shower head's copper. The uh, studs are metal, which metal studs are fine, but the problem with this remodel is that with a condo, they are, the, the ceiling is dropped, so I can't really, these go all the way up to the concrete above the ceiling, so I can't really, I can't take these and move them to where I need them. In an ideal world, this stud would be a little bit over here, another stud would be on this side of this, of this pipe, and we'd have a nice area to be able to mount our valve without interference. I don't have any more metal studs because the framers and contractors are not here. I got to get this valve mounted and I don't have the option of moving this one over. So we're going to work around all that and get this shower valve mounted in here. Now, I'm a little bit different from most people. I don't like the time spout right here in the, in the tub spout uh, shower valve right here. This, to me, should be belly button high. I, I usually set all my shower valves and tub shower valves around belly button height. That gives me a little bit of distance between the body and the spout. I don't like for them to be crowded. I normally set my spout about, about four inches from the center of the pipe down to the top of the tub. And I like to have about 12 to 13 inches between the spout and the body. So what I'm gonna do is work out the math real quick, cut this pipe off, and I might just go ahead and sweat this onto that riser and let it hold it for me so that I'm not constantly fighting it while I'm trying to put the blocking in. What I'm gonna do, I've got to go around this pipe with some blocking and make this secure and make a, tub, make a secure tub spout down here. So it's gonna be a little bit unusual. I've already cut one piece of blocking and as you can see, I'm gonna to have to put this in here and we'll have to probably take two more pieces of wood just to get this out to the right depth. But I'm gonna start that process off camera and then I'm gonna show you what I've done and, and how it's, how I'm doing it and why. So let me get on that. Okay, now this is what I'm running into. I put a two by six between the studs up here behind the valve and one down here behind where my spout's going to go. And I cut a 20 inch two by six and ran it vertically to connect them. Now in order to get this valve body to the exact right depth that I want, if I added another piece of wood, it'd be too far out. But on a job site, there's usually only two by fours, and if you're lucky, you might find a one by four laying around. There's actually one here. That would be a little thin. What I want, they're gonna add half an inch of Durock, and then there's gonna be about three eighths inch for the tile and the mud, roughly. That tends to vary a lot depending on your tile guy. And it varies a lot on what, the, on what different contractors do. But my goal is to basically have this flush just maybe just sticking out just a hair past the, uh, past the Duroc. I'd rather have it just a little bit back in than have it too far out. Um, there is some leeway with this. So since I can't, I don't have a planer here to plane down the wood to the right depth, and I don't have uh, the right size wood, what I'm going to do is mark these spots right here where the yeah that's not very good marking mark right these these spots where these little ears go eat them eat holes in here with the paddle bit to go back about a half an inch and then push this back and screw it and that's going to be just about right and i also lied to you guys i, I was eyeballing the shower head earlier and i thought it was pretty close it was actually one inch off to the to the right, so I did move the shower head over one inch. But this is at the same elevation it was before, using the same blocking that was up there. So let's put the, I know I know I should be using a real drill, but I'm gonna use the impact for this. That's about a half. Very important how you hold your tongue when you're drilling. Eh, gotta go up and see I didn't have my tongue right. 
Let me go up just a little bit. Okay, that one goes. Now it sits back in there. Let's see how that's going to be. Oh, you know what? That's sticking out about a quarter inch past the past what the Durock wheel. So I, I think I'll go with that because I don't think I'm going to get it back any further. It's already hitting the back of the valve. That should be good. Now let's take our black guard off. Whatever you do, don't lose this. Be sure to put it back on. And when the, when the drywallers or whoever's hanging the Durock gets here, make sure you threaten to kill them if they remove it and throw it away. Because they almost always, in my area, take these off and chunk them. I have tried to explain to them in English and Spanish to leave them on there. They say, no, we take them off. I said, no, you dumb fucker. They stay on there. What this is, is this, the guide for the screws. So if you don't have this on there and you're putting your face plate on, it takes a, it's, um, on some of them it's really difficult to hit your screw hole back there. But yeah, some people just, they just don't care. You know, I actually eyeballed that. Eh, pretty close. I actually was talking to the camera and eyeballed it and, and not thinking, but it should be at 16 and a quarter. And where was that? There we go. Oh yeah, that's 16 and a quarter. Well, I got lucky the damn thing didn't make me look stupid. I don't need any help doing that. You know, they put this sleeve on here for a reason. Butamus. Now I'm using the long screws because I'm going through into two blocks. My shit ain't going anywhere, I promise you. All right. Now I have to figure out, I'm gonna go put a drop ear 90 on a piece of copper and run it down here and see what uh, how much wood I'm gonna have to stack on it here to make it right. You want your stub out this needs to be straight because if it's pushed in or pushed out, then your nipple that comes out of the wall is going to be cocked up or cocked down, which leaves a gap at the spout where when the spout screws on, it'll leave a gap on one side and it's ugly. So you want it to be perfectly 90 degrees coming out of the wall. So I'm going to go ahead and make one up at the, at the, with the right length and, and work that out and I'll get back to you on that. I hope nobody cares that I burned the wood. All right, so here's what I got. I actually ended up about three and a half inches from the center down to here. That's perfect. Um, in fact, you just screw the test nipple in there. You guys can see that we're in good shape. Now, the old water lines, I've got to feed them back into here. And this one's really what they did originally when they had the valve down here on the old tubs um, they just swung a 90 at a bastard angle straight from point A to point B and went right in which is cool I would have done the same thing because it saves you a lot of 90s you don't go up and come over and that, that way it saves you fitting saves you time saves you money and saves you potential leaks in this case I've got to find a way to deal with that angle and I, I don't really want to push on it, so I might be, it doesn't look like a 45 will do it. It looks like a 45 would probably kick it back that way. I may, well, I'll have to get around on the back side and work something down. But um, on this one, it's gonna be easy. You can't see it from over there, but I'm gonna have to 90 over and get on this side of this stud and come up and go through and make a straight shot here. I don't know. It's just a little bit too close. I don't want to bend the pipe. Don't want to force anything over 
You're, you, when you move a pipe, you move it using fittings. You don't use it by moving pressure and putting a bind on things, putting excessive force on something. So I'm going to cut it off down low, come up, come over, and go right through there. And uh, let me show you my secret weapon for dealing with metal studs. It also is extremely handy for dealing with metal, um, with copper pipe in these condos. Don't think for a second that I went around and cut all these, especially ones in tight spots, with a uh, with a copper tubing cutter. do is run a piece of copper through here and work my way back down I may go ahead and st uh, sweat these two on there real quick sure wish I had a clean flex brush go ahead and do both of these at once. Most plumbers will sit there and make up the entire thing and then sweat them all at once. And normally I do too. This being a little bit of a special deal, I'm kind of working my way through it and doing them one at a time allows me time to actually think about what I'm going to do next. Ooh, somebody's calling me. I hope it's that hooker. Let's see. I'll go ahead and sweat this on here. So we still have this bastard angle here, right? This is uh, coming at this odd angle and we can't obviously come straight. A 45 would kick it way back over here. Uh, I want to connect these two. Well, the thing you do is make a swing joint. Take a street 90 and a regular 90, put it on here and make it like a hinge. Now let me put some flux on my little pipe here. Plenty of flux, plenty of flux. And I want, it, I want this pipe to be perfectly straight up and down because we're going to put an air chamber on this side. Just a little piece of half inch pipe with a cap on it, but we're going to put an air chamber. And we don't want it at an angle where it sticks out of the wall or anything. So, we'll go ahead and... I've already got the flux inside the fitting. that on there. Make that look straight this way and straight this way. And just like that. Let's make sure that that's all in the wall nice. Oh yeah. Nice. Oh, let me switch that up. Let that, uh, make sure that flux is hard before you go to cool it off, you know, before you go to wipe it down. I mean, make sure, make sure the solder is hard before you go to wipe it down. Damn, 
looks like I've done one of these before. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the back side and work this one around and make the connection. You guys ain't gotta see all that. It's just gonna be me cutting a little pipe and doing a little sweating. But I'll get back to you before, we're, uh, before I leave here and we'll take a look at the finished product. So now we just take our little screwdriver stops, thread this together so that this piece is on here. It's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Wait, how's that go? Oh. <laughs> And just snug that down a little bit. Nut driver would be the proper tool for this, but don't think I have one with me. Ow, damn it. That concrete can be rough on the knees. Listen to me, I sound like a big old pussy. Get in there. Alright. Once those nuts are all the way down, make sure that you're backed all the way out. Which because during the rough-in phase, you want the water going back and forth between everything. Let's put our test plug back on. Put our black thingy back on. Which is a little bit tricky. And there. All right, dirt rock and tile. We come back and trim it out. We're all good to go. Looks good, huh? Well, got any questions or comments or whatever? Put them in the comment section. That's where comments go. Be respectful. If you're one of those asshole plumbers says, "Well, we do it this way," you're a fucking idiot. I'm just going to delete your stupid ass. If you be polite and respectful and ask me why I do certain things a certain way or tell me you got a better way and tell me, fine. Just don't be an asshole. Not on my channel. All right, I'll see you guys on the next one.